In the name of God, the three in one. Amen. Amen. There is a Jewish prayer that is a beautiful and I think simple statement of faith. I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in love even when feeling it not. I believe in God even when God is silent. Khalil Gibran writes, and if you would know God, be not a solver of riddles. Jean-Pierre Cossard, God will never disclose God's self in the shape of that exalted image to which you so vainly cling. Sometimes there is God so quickly, Tennessee Williams. And Elizabeth Barrett Browning, earth's crammed with heaven, and every common bush afire with God. But only those who see take off their shoes. There, have I helped you to understand the Trinity? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder preachers sigh when they can hear someone else try to explain the unexplainable. I have collected wisdom on faith and the nature of God for a long time, and even these esteemed writers that I have called on this morning don't have the words that can express our God to us. What I have shared has helped me, though, to know that any effort to understand God matters. And in the end, how we come to understand and to enter into relationship with God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit is personal. How we live our lives of faith begins there. Years ago, the outdoor church was blessed to have a musician at our outdoor worship. She brought her keyboard every Sunday, no easy task, and played hymns for us. She was a young woman from China, studying at BU and trying to discern her call to ministry. Every week, we would walk together and she would ask questions. Not the kind of questions we often hear from those who volunteer with us, but big questions of faith, of theology, of doctrine. Every week I thought to myself, can I help her? Can I make simple sense of hard questions for her? Can I explain my own theology so that she has a starting place for her own? I've always said that if you want to know how well you understand something, you should try to explain it to a child. Now I think explaining something to Nancy was just as true a test. She was so persistent in her quest. One week, Nancy's question was about my understanding of the Trinity as an Episcopalian. After an afternoon of describing God in three persons, God creator, God incarnate in Jesus, God the Holy Spirit, I offered my own relationship with the Holy Spirit as a guiding force in my own life. And I referred to the Spirit as she. With all that we had talked about, Nancy came back the following Sunday and began our conversation with, I don't think the Holy Spirit is female. <laughs> In that declaration, I knew how deeply she wanted to know God, to make sense of all she was learning, and to affirm her beliefs as a usable theology. For Nancy, the question she asked 
with such intensity on a Sunday afternoon here had to become the strong foundation of her faith, her working theology, her belief that God would accompany her as she returned to minister at home in China. Nancy has not returned to us and we think of her and pray for her that she has found a place to serve God among those she loves. In a way, Nancy is an answer to the psalmist's question this morning. What are we that you should be mindful of us? Nancy is God's beloved, striving to answer God's call to her. We are God's beloved. We are the answer to God's desire for relationship, a source of joy and unending hope. And to remind us not of who we are, but of who God intends us to be, God has made God's self known to us in Jesus and in the Holy Spirit and has given us wisdom to share through our words and actions the faith that unites us to God. Are we always who God intends us to be? Of course not. But God is faithful. God will not abandon us. Jesus is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our counselor and comforter. And whatever is of God builds up. We are of God, and what we say and do will reflect our faith and our belief in a loving God. This is the Sunday of the Diaconate, as established by our bishops last year. At Hal's ordination last week, I gave silent thanks to God for 20 years of ordained ministry as a deacon in the church. I am grateful still to the young stranger who told me I would be a good minister. I'm grateful for the year of constant prayer, asking the same question over and over that led me to discernment in my parish. I am grateful for the many places that I've served for the work God has given me to do. I'm grateful for Nancy who worked her journey beside me, and I'm grateful for the people on the street who bless me with their faith. And I'm grateful for the chance to try to explain the unexplainable, to live into God's belief in who I can be, and to trust in the power and love of God to make all things new. The blessing at the end of our liturgy today is a call to be who God created us to be. Through the gifts of discomfort, anger, tears, and foolishness, may we live into our baptismal vows and bring the good news to a world that so desperately needs to hear it. Remember the words of Jean-Pierre Cossade. God will never disclose God's self in the shape of that exalted image to which you so vainly cling. God will reveal God's self through you, beloved. Believing that can make all the difference.